What's up everyone? Welcome to part one of a new series where we talk about the concepts of deep learning. So in this one, we're going to take a step back from programming and focus on the concepts, the ideas, learn the vocabulary, and try and get a better concept of what's going on with deep learning. So this one's going to be on convolution. So we're going to talk about what is convolution, how it works, what's the mechanics, how to do the calculation and some of the key features to keep aware of such as like the stride the kernel size and all those things you've you've heard but maybe not sure what they mean so let's get started so to begin we're going to start with a concept that maybe you guys are familiar with so in linear algebra there's this operation called the dot product, and what it does is takes two vectors and returns a scalar. And basically what it's trying to do is it figures out the similarity between those two vectors, how similar they are. Um, so for example, if A and B are two vectors in some 2D space where we're going to call the two axes of that space x1 and x2, so we can write A and B as column vectors. So it's just like an array. So it has some component A1 and A2, and same with B. It has some component B1 and B2. And that's just how much they extend out in those two axes. Cool, so if we were to then take the dot product, the process is pretty straightforward. We're just gonna go and we're gonna multiply A1 times B1 and then we're gonna add A2 times B2. So we're just taking the one components, multiplying them, and then taking the B, the two components and multiplying and then summing everything up. And if there were more um, dimensions, we would just continue A3 times B3 and plus A4 times B4 and so on. Cool, so that's how the process works or how you would compute this, but what it represents, if we were to think about it geometrically, what it is is basically how much A is projected onto B. So if we were to draw a line perpendicular to B straight to the tip of A, and we were to then figure out what this length is, this is the length of A, or the norm of A, how long this length is, times the cosine of the angle between them. And this isn't the complete dot product. We'd also have to multiply by the norm of B. But the key concept to take away is when the angle is, say, 90 degrees, the dot product would go to zero because A and B would be at right angles. And we would say they're as dissimilar as they could be. They don't point in the same direction. So if they're at right angles, the dot product goes to zero. If the angle is zero, like they're exactly aligned with each other, now the dot product is maximized. So that's the, the largest value the dot product could be. And then it's just A times B. So that's the like key concept of the dot product. And now we're gonna see how this applies to convolution with images. So let's proceed. So when we have a convolution layer, we'll have what's called a kernel. We'll have our input and then our output. So our kernel will be some small image, like say three by three or five by five, some small template image, which we call a kernel. Sometimes we call it a filter, but it's, it's gonna be our little sampling filter. And then we have our input, which is our image. So if it's fashion MNIST, it's 28 by 28 image of a shoe or a hat or something like that. If it's regular MNIST, it's some handwritten digit. It doesn't matter, it's just some image. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our kernel and we're going to place it on top of our image and then we're going to compute the dot product, the equivalent of a dot product. And then the value at that point is going to be, um, we're going to build up our output by taking our kernel and moving it to different places and taking the dot product. So just like with the vectors, we took the A1 component times the B1 component and then add that to the B2 component times the A2 component. And we just do that step by step. It's the exact same process with the convolution. Let me show you how this works here. So we've got some kernel. It's going to be zero. This 
column zero, this column's one, this column zero. So it makes it easy to compute. And then what we're gonna do is multiply each point times the corresponding pixel in the input. So here's our kernel, and then here's the pixel values of the image at that point. So you can see it's just the projection down onto it. So we're just placing our kernel on top of the image at that point. And then we're just gonna multiply like this point times this point plus this point times this point. So it's zero times zero, one times zero, zero times zero. And we just go point by point. So directly multiply the pixel that lines up with the pixel right below it. And you can see here that these are all zeros. So this whole column here is zero. And then the only one that works is the one column. So we have one times zero, one times zero, one times two, and then this zero column returns all zero. So our answer is just gonna be two. So the dot product between our kernel and our input at this point is just a two. So then in our output, we'll just put a two here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna repeat. So we're just going to move our kernel by what we call the stride. So if we were to move, we would move by one stride. So if our stride is one, we just move one pixel over. And then we perform the operation again. So this time we get a five and we would just repeat. So here we get a 10, a 17, and just go down the, just go one by one, one stride at a time until we completely fill up our output. So that's what the convolution is. It's going and putting that window over the image at one particular point and we get one value out. So one scalar value at each point. And then some key things to point out is we can see here that our input is six by six. So there's six pixels by six pixels, but our output is gonna be four by four. So if I go back to the beginning, you can see here that we're starting right here. So basically the point we're getting is this one right here. So we're basically cropping the outer rim or the outer row and column of pixels out of our output because we can't move our window off the edge. So that's why we get the smaller output. There are techniques to, to maintain the, um, the output and input have the same size. So what you would do is you would do zero padding. So you would just add, you would just add zeros all around the output or excuse me, add zeros all around the input. So that way your output can be the same size. But in this case, we're not doing it. So it's just one thing to keep aware. And like I said, the other important parameter is the stride. So the stride is how much you shift the window each step. So here's a stride of one, but you could do a stride of two, a stride of three. Um, it's up to you. But note that if you do change the stride, your output is gonna change. So if you were to jump by two, you're basically gonna have a smaller output because you're gonna be having, you're gonna be sampling your input at, at a lower rate. So your output's gonna be smaller. Just one thing to keep aware of how the stride can affect your output size. So you might be asking, what's the point of the convolution? What are we trying to do with this operation? Well, the idea is with different types of kernels, we're going to get different outputs. So if we have, for our example here, we have a kernel that's basically just a vertical line. So like I said, with the vector example, when our vectors are basically, when the angle is zero degrees, they're very similar and they're lined up, we're gonna get a high output. We're gonna maximize the dot product. So the same thing here, when our kernel is a vertical line and we find vertical lines in our input, we're gonna maximize the convolution at that point or the dot product at that point. So this kernel is looking for vertical lines. If we had a kernel that's um, horizontal lines or diagonal lines or curved lines, it would, um, as we slide it, we'd get a really high value when the overlap is high or when we find the same shape as our kernel. 
So that's the whole point of it. We use a bunch of them. Like we might start with 32 different kernels with like all the different types of lines and shapes and things like that. So then we can look for those features in our input. And then as we move into the layers, we get more complex kernels um, looking for more complex shapes, like going from lines to curves to full on features like eyes and faces and dogs and things like that. So that's kind of the, the idea behind it. So I think that's going to do it for this one. Um, hopefully this gives you an idea of how the convolution works and what it geometrically represents. So if you've got any questions, leave them below. I'll post this, um, this uh, PDF file to, to my GitHub so you can play with it. And yeah, so stay tuned for the next one. We'll just go down the list and look at other concepts in deep learning. So thanks guys. See ya.